Good morning. We continue our lecture on diffusion in solids. And last class we have learned that diffusion is a process of mixing and we are going to consider particularly this process of mixing in solid state. Now, as uh, we see, we have seen last class that uh, and it has been discussed in detail that this movement of atoms, they are uh, perceptible in case of liquid and gases and we can feel or, or we can see even in certain cases how the process of mixing continues through a phenomena of diffusion in liquid and gas. But the method of diffusion in solid is also exactly same. The atoms and crystals, they are not stationary, they keep moving and as a result, uh, there will be movement of atoms in a particular direction in solids. And this is what we considered last class and we have talked about uh, the phenomenology of diffusions, the phenomena. We also looked at the laws of diffusion, laws that govern diffusion. We also looked at few problems of diffusion couple, how a concentration, if there is a concentration gradient, how does this concentration change with time. We also looked at the effect of temperature. Today we shall look at a little more detail about the mechanism of diffusion and uh, what happens if you have different species, you know, uh, whether the both species they move at the same rate or different and if they are different, what effect does it have on the uh, concentration distribution uh, in the solid. Now, while looking at some of the solutions uh, in the last class, I, I think what, what it came out that uh, the process of diffusion can be simulated as one of random walk and uh, it was and this expression was partly derived up to this, but this also can be uh, you know uh, you, you can simplify it, you can add these terms and then you get a factor like this. And here each of these when you, this is at actually a dot product. So, each of these cases there are dot products. So, here also this is a dot product and what we have done here uh, is uh, uh, basically uh, if you have one vector say random walk in this direction, another random walk in this direction. So, this is R i, this is R. Uh, let us say i plus j. So, in that case there is an angle subtended and we call this angle i i plus j. So, this dot product r i dot r i plus j this will be equal to magnitudes of r i, magnitude of r i plus j times cos theta that is i i plus j the specific angle. Now, we can always uh, see that that average distance or step size of the movement if it is equal to lambda, then we can say this will be equal to lambda square cos theta. So, this is what has been done over here. So, clearly what you see uh, uh, on the slide is this, if you take this common because this sum will be n times lambda square. So, basically uh, this you can take common. So, you have a factor which is a function of the direction and this directionality uh, is quite important. If this is totally random, if these materials, uh, these uh, atoms, they are free to move in all directions, which is quite possible in certain cases, they can free to move, then this sum total of this uh, sum total of cos theta 
will come out to be 0, because in certain angle this will be positive, in certain direction the cos theta will be negative and therefore, the total sum may come out to be 0, but in cases where there is a directionality uh, in the movement, where there is a directionality in the movement, in that case this is so cos theta, this may not be equal to 0. So, there you can have a orientation factor, which is uh, or directionality factor and which is shown here. So, that means, that average distance a, 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 a of a random walk, average distance of a random walk will be equal to lambda root n and there will be a concentration factor. Now, let us look at the mechanism of diffusion in crystalline solids. Solids mostly that we will be dealing with, they are mostly cubic, most of the metal, majority of the metal, maybe two third of the all metals which are known, they are all, uh, they all have cubic structure. Cubic structure has very high symmetry and therefore, for all practical purposes, we can assume that diffusivity is same in virtually all direction in most metals which may not be true in certain metals, where uh, they have hexagonal and other with a low symmetry. It may be different in different direction, but let us not go into that detail and we will look at diffusion mostly in cubic solids. And this diagram pictorially represents a systematic array of atoms and here uh, the material often has some vacancies, say like some of the places the sites are vacant. So, these are the normal sites, this is a 2 D and these are the normal site. Now, the how can atom move from one place to another? So, one mechanism is if there is an atom in the interstitial gap, this is a normal lattice site, this is a normal lattice site and in between there is an interstitial gap if there is an atom here and if it tries, it, if it can move over here, possibly when it moves gap here is smaller, it may have to push it a little and then come here. So, this is one mechanism of uh, thermally activated motion of atoms in solids or diffusion. Uh, so, basically this is called interstitial mechanism. Another thing which we can think about, the atom can exchange position with vacant sites. So, if there is a vac lattice vacancy, at this lattice site there is no atom here. So, an atom which is located here can move to this vacancy. So, this is called vacancy driven uh, move motion of atom. We can also think about certain things like site exchange. So, this atom, these two, which are the nearest neighbor, sometimes this goes here, this goes there. There is also a mechanism called indirect interstitial movement. So, basically, if uh, what happens, there is a, a, an atom here, say somehow this often can happen in uh, uh, radiation damage, an atom is pushed into interstitial site. So, this can push this atom to interstitial and can occupy this lattice site. This is also uh, through uh, movement takes place through interstices. So, this we call it indirect interstitial mechanism. There is also a mechanism called ring mechanism that means, atoms they can exchange like this and extend of this site exchange and here this movement is like this. But out of this, we will see that there have been lot of experiments done and possibly it looks that vacancy and interstitial movements are possibly the mechanisms which <coughs> can explain many of the phenomena of diffusion. Now, let us look at uh, diffusion of carbon atom in alpha iron. Now, we know that alpha iron uh, has a BCC structure. 
So, BCC structure which is shown over here and the carbon atoms are present in the interstitials and the likely that interstitials which are shown here in the figure uh, with, uh, uh, with color red. So, this one these are the interstitial sites they are called the octahedral sites. Now, look at this plane. This plane has normal atoms, iron atoms located at the corner and we have carbon atoms located. These are likely sites, it is not that all of these sites will be occupied. And let us consider the next similar plane is this and here also there is an atom over here and these are the interstitial sites. Now, if you look at this atomistic mechanism, so if it, there is a carbon atom here, if it has to move to this plane, the nearest site here, but this is occupied. So, this atom is not able to move, but look at this atom over here, which is an interstitial atom over here and this can move to this point. So, that means not all the interstitial atom on this plane have the ability to diffuse or move to the next plane. So, that means we have to calculate from the atomistic mechanism if you have to calculate or estimate uh, that magnitude of the diffusivity in that case or jump frequency we have to look at how many atoms or how many uh, interstitial atoms are likely to move or what is the probability that a particular that this atoms of this certain number of atoms can move from here to here. For this we have to look at and estimate what is the number of interstitial in, in a particular plane. Now, let us consider this method is described here, consider plane A. So, plane A apparently it looks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 there are 5 sites, but they are shared by similar other plane also. What it matters is number per unit area. So, basically now here say suppose this particular plane if we consider say this one which is at the center exclusively belongs to this plane. So, this we can say one atom which exclusively belongs to the plane this is one its contribution to the plane is one. But these corner atoms, they are shared by another plane on the next unit cell. So, therefore, its contribution to this plane is half. So, there are 4 of this, so 4 times half equal to 3. Now, similarly you can calculate this number of atoms in this effective number of interstitial sites on this particular plane. This also will come out to be 3. So, that means, number of atoms or interstitial site here and here are same. Now, when the carbon atom moves what is the net flux? Carbon can jump from here to here, it can jump from here to here as well. So, this is a random process uh, and uh, so this movement uh, is uh, both are likely it can go here to here or an, an interstitial site from here it can go to this plane. So, net flux of carbon if you have to calculate you have to calculate net flux from plane 1 to 2 subtract the flux from plane 2 to 1. So, this is the net flux from plane 1 to 2 and let us see how does this calculation proceeds. Now, we can visualize uh, that the interstitial diffusion like this. So, if you have a this is a crystal, this is an interstitial site and uh, see the stability of a structure is determined by its free energy, the Gibbs free energy which is shown over here. So, if an atom if an interstitial lies here, this gives the structure over here, this is one stable state. Now, if it moves from here to here, the arrangement is like this. Both cases you see that there is little distortion in the lattice, both are quite stable structure. So, this has minimum free energy, but for it this 
atom to migrate from this side to this side, it has to push these two atom apart something like this and then only it can move to the next site. So, that means, it has to pass through an activation hill. So, this is the thermal activation which has to be provided for this atom to move uh, one atomic distance or one uh, particular one uh, atomic distance from here to here. So, now, so the case is basically, so this is the, so effectively what we can say that if it moves this distance a by 2, the other part is quite easy and this is spontaneous. So, effective distance this atom must move is a by 2. So, with that let us look at how do we calculate this net flux from plane 1 to 2. This will depend on how many atoms are there that is concentration number of atoms per unit area. Then there will be a jump frequency, jump frequency times the how many of these atoms can move and there is also a geometrical factor one fourth we discussed last time for an atom to move in a particular direction uh, this probability uh, in a 3 D in a moving in a particular direction comes out to be one fourth. So, with this you can calculate that flux will be equal to this is the jump frequency and this is the jump frequency capital gamma is the jump frequency and this product is 1 over 6 and then this concentration difference. Now, this concentration is number of atoms uh, that in that particular area. So, basically if we go to the previous side, so number of atom over here. So, that means we can take a thin slice uh, a by 2 that distance from here to here that uh, a by 2 is the distance over here and in that case uh, how do you calculate this uh, uh, we go back to this. So, this will be that volume will be if we say that a plane area is unity then this is the volume unit area times a by 2 this is the volume we have to consider and then times this is the volume concentration. So, C 1 is this. Now, there is a similarly uh, you can calculate C 2 also uh, will be uh, because number of uh, uh, atom they are, they are similar. So, they, they, they you can say the concentration that also will be similar, but point is there is a difference if we know the concentration here there is likely to be a difference in the concentration nearby which is done by this is uh, the Taylor series you consider the first term and then uh, if you solve this then it comes you get this and then this gamma a square by 24 this comes out to be the diffusivity. So, that means from this atomic concept mechanisms also you can find out an expression for diffusivity and which is over listed over here. Now, what is A? Now, that is it is a jump distance average jump distance we talked about is lambda and here we find that average jump distance is A by 2 and the crystal lattice if we go uh, previous here this is the distance e, so jump distance is a by 2. So, basically so this is the jump distance and then what is the jump frequency? Jump frequency is given by this is a Debye <coughs> frequency which is of the order of uh, 10 to the power 13 per seconds and exponential minus this is the Gibbs free energy. So, similar that activation hill over k t. So, this is the jump frequency. So, therefore, the diffusivity expression is this. Now, let us look at uh, diffusion of atoms in a normal uh, lattice. 
in a normal lattice also we just talked about the interstitial diffusion and we have seen that from atomistic mechanism it is possible to find an expression for diffusivity coefficient. Now, can a similar thing be done in case of a substitutional atom or a, that self diffusion say something which is shown over here. Now, in case of interstitial a large fraction like carbon when we were considering carbon in alpha iron large number of these sites are vacant, but the number of vacancies here most of the sites will be occupied. So, which is shown here there is a vacancy over here. So, that means a, an atom can move if there, a, there is a vacancy existing otherwise if it has to move it has to create another vacancy. If, if it has to move and push if this atom moves here this has to prove, uh, prove and then a vacancy has to be created at another site. So, this is uh, so basically the two step will be involved. So, now atom so this is what is written here. So, now we have learnt about a factor called coordination number z is the number of atoms the nearest neighbor atom. So, like here in the 2 D whatever is shown here. So, which is the nearest atom so this, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that is on this plane the nearest neighbor is 4, so, but in 3 D this nearest neighbor varies from crystal structure to structure. So, like if you have a face centered cubic structure where you have maximum coordination number z is 12, in body centered cubic structure coordination number is 8. And let us say that C v represent that the number of vacancies that is in fraction this is the vacant sites in fractions. Now, let us try and find out the self diffusion of iron in BCC lattice where the atom this coordination number is 8. So, here is a probability that a site is vacant a particular site out of this 8 how many are vacant this will be z times C v. And then we can go back to the previous expression that in a general any lattice the diffusivity is equal to that lambda square this distance over 6 tau. Now, this 1 over tau you can say you can say that the, this is uh, that diffusivity. So, now here how do you calculate this? Now, here you have to multiply this by uh, as uh, the, the as so here 1 over tau uh, is equal to uh, uh, this is the diffusion distance. So, you have to multiply this by this probability uh, that a site is vacant and times this uh, you go to the previous one you see this diffusivity is given over here. Sorry. Mm. And if you build upon this, this is equal to uh, see there are one term you know this is a free energy term over here. Now, this free energy also you can this has two part one is that enthalpy another is the entropy. So, free energy means this ent part of that energy is not free. So, if you substitute this and then you try and take out the part which is not dependent on temperature. So, which is shown here uh, if you substitute uh, you, you, this is simple algebraic simplification. Now, this part is dependent on the temperature. Now, the question comes there is a how what is this uh, vacancy concentration how do you determine. Now, this is given by uh, this expression uh, exponential the number of sites which are vacant 
is given by that Boltzmann statistics. So, or uh, uh, this is exponential, this is the energy which is needed uh, to create a vacancy over k t, k is a Boltzmann constant and here also capital G, this is the free energy and which is has also two parts, this is the enthalpy to create a vacancy and this is the entropy terms, the T times uh, this is entropy which is associated uh, with the vacancy creation. Now, here also then you sort out the temperature dependent and independent parts. If you do it which is shown over here, now this part is temperature independent and we have seen earlier that diffusivity can be written as d is equal to d naught exponential this activation energy for diffusion over k t. Now, here this k uh, sorry a q which is that activation energy which is equal to these two. So, that means for self diffusion you have that two enthalpy terms are involved. One is the enthalpy for migration, another is enthalpy for formation of uh, uh, basically a vacancy that means, this is vacancy assisted. So, now a question can come that uh, what is the diffusivity, the vacancy diffusion and self diffusion which is higher. Now, obviously, uh, here you have two component. So, in case of self diffusion that activation energy is higher. So, therefore, obviously self diffusion will be slower than vacancy diffusion and d naught part which is basically frequency dependent which is called which is equal to this. So, this explains how from the concept of uh, atomistic mechanism it is possible to derive and have uh, some idea about the factors on which the diffusivity will depend. And one thumb rule is diffusivity of any atom or uh, any uh, self diffusion of coefficient of uh, any metal uh, at room temperature will be a function of its melting point. The materials which have lower melting point at room temperature they have higher diffusivity. So, this is a general thumb rule and in fact, many cases where diffusion data are not available, there are simple methods empirical expression by which from the melting point it is possible to estimate self diffusion. Now, let us look at we talked about uh, diffuse diffusion phenomena self diffusion, how are there any experimental method of determining self diffusions. Now, we have uh, uh, talked about the in, in ter, uh, well considering the measurement of vacancy and we have seen that resistivity ha has a direct correlation with a vacancy concentration. So, resistivity measurement is a good uh, technique uh, to measure uh, the or uh, determine uh, the coefficient of self diffusion. Now, this changes resistivity say what we try and monitor if you take a piece of metal say suppose uh, silver or any metal copper heat it to a high temperature and then quench. Then at room temperature you have arrested that higher number of vacancy. So, this is in a metastable state. Now, if you anneal it at a certain temperatures say may be 50 uh, say little higher than room temperature may be 80 degree or 100 degree. If you keep annealing and as a function at a particular temperature T 1, then we will find its resistivity will go on decreasing and which is shown over here. And this rate of decrease is actually proportional to the change in vacancy concentration and vacancy concentration which is shown over here, this is proportional to that 1 over that relaxation time. So, basically this will be proportional to exponential uh, h over k t, this h m is you can say that this is the enthalpy of or activation energy for migration of uh, 
or, or movement of these uh, migration of atoms. Now, here if you look at uh, this plot and then what you do, you change the temperature suddenly. Now, this resistivity setups are available which are automated and if you change the temperature suddenly if you increase it, this rate of decrease this will increase. Now, then what you draw is a tangent over here and tangent over here. So, these are this d rho over d t you find out at two different temperatures and it is quite easy to show from this. If you uh, the ratio of these two tangent will be equal to this factor. I leave it to you to derive and by this several experiments have been done and in fact, uh, in on the same sample you can repeat it number of time. Like here you can increase it again then decrease, increase, decrease. So, that way you can find out uh, 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 get a several readings between T 1 and T 2 and average of that will give you a measure of that activation energy for migration and usually this comes about uh, for more uh, materials for self diffusion it comes about uh, 1 electron volt. Now, let us see is composition if diffusivity is this a function of composition. So, far uh, we did not look at it uh, or we ignored that, we assume that diffusivity is not a function of uh, composition and therefore, that in the diffusivity equations uh, we took out I mean uh, the d. So, basically in this uh, diffusivity expression uh, we used to take d outside and we will used to write it d c d t d d 2 c d x square. Now, what happens if this is a function of composition, then you cannot take this out. So, basically uh, this is because uh, this will be a function of concentration and we know that uh, from our uh, some of the types of plot that this concentration keeps on changing with the distance. The concentration here is different, here it is different. So, that means, d if this diffusivity is a function of concentration in a way uh, and concentration changes with distance. So, this too is a function of uh, x. So, therefore, uh, you cannot take it outside. So, therefore, uh, it is need to uh, there is a necessity to know how this diffusivity depends on concentration. Now, here are two uh, a diffusion couple two metal A and B and this is the interface. Now, this problem that comes up is uh, can you how do we solve this? Is there a way uh, we can uh, solve this equation? Now, in differential equation often we do some amount of transformation. Now, now, here is we talk about a particular transformation where a particular transformation which is uh, uh, based on we have seen that diffusion distance is actually proportional to root over t. So, basic uh, so therefore, if we make a substitution that a variable we think about a variable which is x as a eta which is we put root over t. And if we substitute this in the diffusivity equation that d c d t equal to d d x. if we make this substitution, then we will find out that this partial differential equation gets converted into an ordinary differential equation. And therefore, which is shown over here, what has been done is d c d t 
uh, this is how you can convert and once you uh, substitute it here, then it becomes it is transformed into a into an ordinary differential equation. So, which is possible you can uh, to integrate it is and find out a solution. Now, this is shown over here. So, this is uh, the expression and here if you now integrate it, this integration is possible because if you integrate, so this goes out. So, this is the solution that is d d c d eta, then you have to substitute the limit that is a concentration uh, c 0 at uh, time t 0 uh, or c and this is the concentration at a particular point. And when you do it, so, so now this question comes how do you find out this. Now, for this you have to carry out an experiment that means, you make a diffusion couple and often when such a couple is met people put some marker here. So, markers are nothing, but uh, a different metal which is not soluble in either. So, whenever and whereas, these two A and B they are soluble in each other. So, therefore, these markers will not get affected B will move from this end to this end A will move from this end to this end and ultimately a concentration profile will be set up. So, initially this is C 0 and here uh, this is the concentration of B in A and this is the concentration of B in B. So, this is how a concentration profile will set in at any time t. Now, any time t if you know this plot then it is possible to integrate that expression and find out this effective that diffusion coefficient, diffusion coefficient as a function of concentration. And this is what is shown over here. So, this is the concentration profile and often we can normalize it, write it C over that initial that composition C naught, C over C naught and this starts from 0 to let us say this is 1. Now, look at uh, this expression here, this eta you can substitute back x over root t. If you do that, then this gets converted, this is integral x dc c 0 to c. So, this is the part and this part becomes this. Now, look at this gradient. Now, at c 0, so basically where is this c equal to 0? So, if the concentration is C 0, you find that uh, this are uh, concentration is C 0. In that case, in both these ends, this slope is 0. So, therefore, uh, here you can say that it is necessary you can substitute one of this concentration. This is the solution. Now, the question comes what is that concentration N e c? N e c is over here. So, which uh, let me see this one. So, N e c say suppose this is the one N e c. In that case that integration is refers to this area x and from where do you measure x? So, it is quite important to find out that interface from where you will measure the x. Now, this is defined as a line which is called the Matano interface or Matano plane and what does this signify? This is a plane uh, or a line over here where these two area they are equal. See this integration when you say that integration x d c, if you find this out, so x is actually a small element here. This is the small element 
and you can find out this area and this is a change in concentration d c. So, this is the area then you integrate it from particular concentration that is say c 0 to c or you say in this particular case is initially this concentration is 0 it is normalized with c 0 so another term. So, basically so you can say that from 0 to c from 0 this is 0 this is the uh, final concentration 1 and in fact if you substitute it from 0 to 1 x d c this area will come out to be 0 because in this part this area this is negative. So, total area so that means this defines this Matano plane or Matano interface. So, first step will be to find out this Matano interface and then for each concentration you find out this area. If this is the concentration you find out this area. If you say next is up to this then you find out area up to this, this particular area. And that is how it is possible to find out uh, in that case once uh, you, you do it then it is a real it is just a substitution. So, basically uh, it is a, a simple a substitution and then you can calculate uh, this once this is known and then you, you can also find out this particular concentration you draw this tangent this tangent will give you this and usually uh, this plot is for a fixed time t which is known this is for a fixed time which is known. So, therefore, in this expression this area you have found out you substitute it here and this t is known this tangent at particular concentration can be determined by drawing a tangent on that particular point. So, having done this it is possible to find out uh, this effective diffusion coefficient. Now, let us uh, look at uh, uh, that there has been a, a good a, a, an excellent experiment was conducted by Kirkendall that is way back and this effect is known after uh, his name Kirkend and known as Kirkendall effect. He had taken uh, a piece of copper uh, which surrounding and put it uh, surrounding an alpha brass and a molybdenum markers were put which are shown over here and, and if you heat it and then take a section and this section diagram it looks like this and then one can do chemical analysis and find out the concentration. So, initially you can see the concentration alpha brass it is an alloy it has about uh, 30 percent zinc dissolved in copper. So, here you have a zinc in solution in copper and here it is pure copper. So, there is a concentration gradient zinc will try and diffuse copper also will try uh, can, can also move across the interface. Now, the mobility of these two atoms are different. So, therefore, and we know that zinc diffuses faster because its melting point is much lower than that of copper. So, zinc moves from, from this to this, copper moves from this to this. So, there is a, a difference in their diffusivity. So, therefore, uh, a concentration gradient something like this is set up and when this experiment this section was taken and found out then they found that this markers keep moving they are not stationary the markers move. In fact, the more number of uh, zinc atoms move than the copper through that interface. So, therefore, this marker shifts. So, molybdenum marker they move closer in that case because more zinc from here goes to copper then number of copper atom which comes this side. So, therefore, the marker moves. So, this is a clear indication of uh, vacancy assisted basically we will see later uh, uh, this is a clear case that uh, 
vacancy mechanism or, or direct evidence how vacancy plays an important role in diffusion. Now, with this concept it is possible to derive an expression uh, that uh, uh, see the, this uh, the effective the diffusivity this d whether uh, the question that comes true this d it is a function of composition, but how does it depend the two atoms A and B they may not have same diffusivity and in fact, the Kirkendall effect shows that the A and B they are not equal and if they are not equal then the marker will move. Now, the question comes is it possible to find out diffusivity uh, of the D A and D B individually. Now, for that we have to look at uh, uh, we have to derive an expression and this is a famous equation goes by the name of Darkin uh, who was the first to derive it and you visualize this is a diffusion couple of two metal A and B and there was a marker here and after some time whatever we find that marker has moved one side and this is a Matano plane. So, what we can say with respect to that means, Matano plane is the one which represents that is uh, you can say the diffusion flux between that concentration grade uh, the profile the center point of that concentration profile is the Matano interface. So, this distance it is measurable this marker movement is measurable and you can do it as a function of time and if you do that marker movement the distance between uh, the Matano phase and uh, Matano interface and uh, distance between Matano in uh, this plane and this x you will find that x is proportional to root over t. So, base uh, in that case you can write that x square by t may, will be a constant this what it means this is a constant not Boltzmann constant some constant. So, this is measurable. So, that means, B can be measured by experiment. Now, question comes how do we estimate D A and D B and this is shown over here and this derivation is based on the assumption that there is no porosity formation due to diffusion. One may wonder if the two uh, the diffusivities are different it may leave behind some voids. Now, which are known as they, it actually forms in certain material they are known as Kirkendall voids, but we make this assumption that no such void formation is there. So, with that assumption in that case the net flux have to balance. Now, let us see how do you calculate net flux of A at this place this x A atom moving from here to this side this is given by this equation d a and this is the concentration gradient. So, number of a atom per unit volume and uh, n a is the number of a atom. So, this is basically the fixed law and, and here you can see that number of these atoms they keep moving through uh, the marker. Now, here at unit time that marker moves a distance v. So, number of atom which moves through the markers it has moved from here to here. So, this is the volume basically unit distance this will be v. So, v times this area if you assume this cross section area is 1. So, this volume is uh, v times n a. So, this is the flux. So, similarly the flux of a at x plus d x will be this. Now, let us see that uh, 
Wait. Now, if you look at here the flux of A, this is equal to minus d a d n a d x plus velocity times. Similarly, b also you can write out in the same way. V this is number of B atoms per unit volume and if you add the 2 which is the net flux through the marker, this is the J net and then if you add the 2 you will have this plus V N A plus N B. Now, which is shown over here. So, if you do a little algebraic simplification, now this net movement that flux should balance through that is amount of material moving through the marker since no vacancies are being created, this is equal to 0. If you do it, then it is possible to show that velocity of the marker is given by this equation. Now, here if you substitute uh, this is the total number of atom, then N A the capital N A is the atom fraction, N A this is atom fraction. Now, this total capital N A plus N B equal to 1. So, therefore, you can say that this is the relationship between N A and N B. If you substitute it, it is possible to show that velocity of the marker it is equal to d a minus d b and del capital N a del x. It can be written in terms of N b as well. So, clearly you see that if the d a is not equal to d b, this will have a finite value. So, this is why the marker moves. Now, the question comes uh, in that case is it possible to find out an expression, how do you find both together. So, for this you find this our say let us now look at that flux of A at an interface x which is given here. Similarly, you can write the same flux at x plus d x. So, basically you have to differentiate it and this is the incremental flux. In that case, this is the build up of the concentration in that thin cell. This is the delta x thin cell, this is the build up of that concentration and which is equal to this you can say the minus j a del x and then you can from here itself you can substitute this term over here. This j a is over here you substitute you get this and this is a concentration build up. So, therefore, you can say this is del n a d t. So, therefore, this is one expression and you can also convert it. You divide both by n a plus n b the total number of atom this side and this side. Then you get this expression. And now, here if you substitute previous one, if you substitute the expression for V which has been derived and then you get this expression and then what you get this is equal to this minus
d a yes similarly plus d b you can write this and ultimately it is possible to show that this is equal to n b plus so this is one expression so to sum up what what you can see here you have one expression which is the velocity which is determinable so d a minus d b del n a del x so this is determined uh, we can be the experimentally determined also have this expression this is also determinable in that case and another relation you have n b plus n a equal to 1. So, we have two unknown this is 1 and 2 and the concentrations are known. So, therefore, which can be determined. So, it is possible to determine d a and d b individually. And uh, so, today we looked at the atomistic mechanism. We also seen that if the species are different, there is a difference uh, in uh, movement. Uh, it can lead to uh, a movement of concept of that Kirkendall effect we have looked at and assuming with some assumption that there is no void, we have derived an expression for the individuals or intrinsic diffuse, uh, diffusion coefficient that d a and d b they are called intrinsic diffusion coefficient. Now, in almost of I mean this is a very important subject and maybe I think uh, two hour uh, it was difficult to cover it fully, but later on from time to time will be may, uh, referring to these concepts and uh, it will be further uh, elucidated in subsequent lectures. Thank you.